that this is all alleged. I've never met any of these people. I've deeply researched all of my information. This is a trigger warning in this video I may be talking about or showing sensitive material about some subjects or topics that may be disturbing or upsetting or may bring forth some troubling memories as you read in the description or title. With that said, either end the video now or brace yourself. Aside from that, enjoy. Okay, the story says that the library of Alexandria burned down. The library held over 400,000 scrolls and more. Many believe this fire happened in Africa. Despite no evidence of an alleged fire or any old structure showing some fire that may have occurred, or locations in Africa pinpointing this suspected fire, archaeologists have gone empty-handed and left with more questions and theories. They follow historical stories of the library being built, which still needs to be determined. They assume it may have been built during the reign of Ptolemy II, Philadelphus between 285 and 246 BC. Notice the last name similar to Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. I wanted to point that out because <laughs> that would come up later. The popular rumor is that the entire library didn't burn down and many items were saved. However, many accounts of people still working at the library after it allegedly burned down too. A geographer, Strabo, visiting the library around 20 BC and the scholar Didymus Chalcentris indicates that he had access to some of the library's resources. It was said that the lack of funding and the polymerine invasion destroyed the remaining library. But again, as I said before, archaeologists, explorers, etc. cannot seem to find any proof of these battles fires or anything of the kind in Africa. They found destroyed towns and structures, which they assume were the locations of historical events, but it's all conjecture. No artifacts, drawings, carvings, or anything to coincide with these stories. So it goes back to the original story. Maybe they're looking in the wrong country. With that said, here are the theories of it being an alleged library of Alexandria in the United States all this time and still here. Do you all remember the Library of Congress, the library of many books and scrolls that was split from New York and Philadelphia, hence the name Philadelphia, a.k.a. Philadelphus? Mm -hmm. Congress had access to sizable libraries in both cities, the New York Society Library and the Free Library of Philadelphia. In 1800, as part of an act of Congress providing for the removal of the new national government from Philadelphia to Washington, President John Adams approved an act of Congress providing $5,000 for books for the use of Congress, the beginning of the Library of Congress. But look at where these libraries are located and what is still standing. There is a Library of Alexandria, Virginia. Mm -hmm just eight miles from the Library of Congress and not far from a place called Egypt on the Potomac River, similar to Ptolemy or Ptolemaic dynasty or kingdom. Could this river that is millions of years old be the river they claim to take that's connected to the Mississippi River? The Mediterranean Sea will be connected to the Nile River compared to history. The libraries, they said, are across the Mediterranean Sea, where they always describe going eastern. It was written that Ptolemy VII was murdered and succeeded by Ptolemy VIII, Fiskin, who immediately set about punishing all those who had supported his predecessor, forcing Aristarchus to flee Egypt and take refuge on the island of Cyprus where he died shortly after that. Then Ptolemy VIII expelled all foreign scholars from Alexandria, forcing them to disperse across the Eastern Mediterranean. They always describe it as Western to Eastern. 
they don't describe going western or eastern from Egypt or often now. They describe the river western and eastern. The Mediterranean Sea is north of the Nile River in Africa. Potomac River flows east to west, crossing the Mississippi River. The river is conveniently spelled like Ptolemy or Ptolemic. You make the call. Now getting back to the Library of Congress, it was told that the library holds the secret of genuine indigenous people of America and the world. So they set out a vengeance to destroy any proof of the true history of indigenous people. This was during the rise of the Roman Empire. They tried desperately to destroy everything, cutting noses, decapitating heads on statues and more. And now the descendants of these people are the ones who are still hiding and rewriting history. This is why the Library of Congress has so much historical decorative history inside it for a building allegedly built in the 1800s that is called the Thomas Jefferson Building. But get this, and this takes the cake. For this library to be built by men during the time of men ruling was on the rise, why does it have a woman in the center of this men build dominating library? There have been many theories about this woman wearing a Morris head wrap and holding a torch. It always seems that the masons and creators of these historical structures to pay homage to the original rulers and creators. Hence the Statue of Liberty and the Lady Justice holding scales, who looks like she is wearing dreadlocks. Why a female in a male-dominant court system even centuries later is even there? Some say that this depicts Alexandria, where Alexander the Great claimed to build a city that could bear his name. But most would say these are the depictions of goddess Isis, whose praise was still significant even after Alexander's conquest and now. You see, James Madison of Virginia is credited with creating a congressional library, first making such a proposition in 1783. Madison's initial proposal was rejected at the time, but represented the first real introduction of the idea of a congressional library in the years after the Revolutionary War. The Philadelphia Library Company and New York Society Library served as a surrogate congressional libraries whenever Congress held sessions in those respective cities. The Library of Congress was established on April 24, 1800, when President John Adams signed an act of Congress which also provided for the transfer of the seat of government from Philadelphia to the new capital city of Washington. Part of legislation appropriated $5,000 for purchasing such books as may be necessary for using Congress and fitting up a suitable apartment for containing them. Books were ordered from London and the collection consisted of 740 books and three maps housed new United States Capitol. This was when President Thomas Jefferson came into play and played an essential role in establishing the structure of Library of Congress. On January 26, 1802, he signed the bill that allowed the president to appoint the Librarian of Congress and established a joint committee on the library to regulate and oversee it. Some of these findings are scrolls found in the Grand Canyon. This is why many presidents today are still trying to preserve the Grand Canyon National Park Act, including Biden. What are they trying to hide? It makes you believe the movie National Treasure even more. Because it's been proven that each president has a book. I'm sure they came to know what was found in the Grand Canyon and how it could destroy history and religion as we know it. I mean, if there wasn't anything to hide, why go through so much trouble protecting the alleged place of only mountains and rocks? Why not let them excavate it and turn it into a museum then? The historical scripture of this sea is in the Bible, where it says in Exodus 10, 19 and the lord turned a mighty strong west wind which took away the locusts and cast them into the red sea there remained not one locust in all the coast of egypt meaning that this is in fact a sea but why is it called red many believe because it was once shaded red from some historical event of some kind 
Well, with careful research, that is not the case. You see, the Red Sea is Arabic, Hebrew, and later the Romanized word for red is Yamsif. And Hebrew and Yamsif mentioned in Exodus too. And it's Reed Sea with two E's. Reed Sea with two E's. Sometimes translated as the Sea of Reeds which is a body of water the Israelites crossed following their exodus from Egypt. The same phrase appears in over 20 other places in the Hebrew Bible. This has traditionally been interpreted as referring to the Red Sea, following the Greek Septuagint's rendering of the phrase. However, the appropriate translation of the phrase remains a matter of dispute, as does the exact location referred to. But getting back to the original meaning of a reed, R-E-E-D, which means any various tall grass with slender, often prominently jointed stems that grow especially in wet areas. An ancient Hebrew unit of length equal to six cubits. Oh, yes. So, with Revelation in mind, we can clearly say that when the Bible says Exodus 13:18. But God led the people about through the way of the wilderness of the Red Sea and the children of Israel went up harnessed out of the land of Egypt. So the key word here is wilderness, which means tall grass, etc. Most of the scriptures talk about wilderness and close to the land of Egypt. Like it says in Judges eleven sixteen. But when Israel came up from Egypt and walked through the wilderness unto the Red Sea and came to the Kedesh. I can go on and on, but I think you all get the picture. The Red Sea is not the color red. It's a sea of reeds, tall grass, etc. Like the wilderness near wetlands, sea, or oceans. With that said, what area is by Egypt surrounded by reeds and is around the border of Egypt and crosses the Nile River, as it says in Zechariah 10.11? And they will pass through the sea of distress and anxiety with the Lord leading his people as at the Red Sea. And he will strike the waves in the sea so that all the depths of the Nile will dry up. And the pride of Assyria will be brought down and the scepter of the taskmasters of Egypt will pass away. The scriptures don't say that after the Lord struck the waves of the sea, they walked through the desert and then came upon the Nile River. Every scripture says they travel from the Red Sea to Egypt or from the Red Sea to the Nile River, not from the Red Sea to Egypt slash desert to the Nile River. The Red Sea is always described as the wilderness. So this could not be in Africa because a small portion of the Red Sea is across Egypt. And after that is land slash desert. Then it hits the Nile River. This land or desert is never mentioned in the Bible as being between the Nile River and the Red Sea. So this rules out Africa. Well, we know the Red Sea means reed, R-E-E-D, the Sea of Reeds, meaning tall grass, plants, trees, etc. And it's surrounded by sea. There is plenty of reed along the shoreline of the Gulf of Mexico, where the Mississippi River and the Rio Grande River flow in. Compare this to the scripture account of walking through the wilderness of the Red Sea to Egypt or from the Red Sea to the Nile River. Converted this to the Red Sea to the Mississippi River and the scriptures that say the Nile slash Mississippi to the Mediterranean, the Potomac River. I bet if, if explorers and archaeologists excavate or explore these areas, they will find many historical items. Well, that's pretty much it. Stay tuned for more research. I believe many ancient people crossed the Sea of Reeds along the shoreline of the Gulf of Mexico into Egypt, America into the Mississippi River. Then, later into the Potomac River. Potomac equals Mediterranean Sea Mississippi River equals Nile River. And thanks for staying through our duration of part one and part two. Leave your comments below and share, 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 share. share.